I'm Kath, my channel is Made by Kath Craft and welcome to my latest episode of my midweek sewing chat. And if you've watched this series before you'll know it's quite a relaxed chatty series where I pop on in the week and share a little bit about what I've been up to on the sewing front. So I often share um, projects I've completed or how I'm getting on with projects I've got in progress. Um, if I've had any new arrivals in terms of fabric and patterns or sewing tools or anything like that. I sometimes include a bit about what I'm up to on the knitting front too. And in today's video, I've got a little mini tutorial that I'll put towards the end about a particular adjustment I made on a recent garment that somebody had asked about. But I really enjoy filming these chatty videos. It's really nice to just pop on and share a bit about what I've been crafting and yeah, just share my enjoyment of um, dressmaking and knitting and all of those types of crafty things. So it's nice to be back on. I actually had a break last week, as you might know. Um, my children were on half term last week, so I was hoping I might still be able to squeeze in filming a video, but it didn't happen. We ended up a little bit busy and um, I hadn't done as much sewing last week anyway, so I didn't have quite as much to share. But now I'm back on and I've got two weeks worth of bits and bobs that I've been up to. So I'm really looking forward to sharing what I've been up to on the sewing front. So before I start talking about what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front, as usual, I'll start the video off with what I'm wearing today. And over the last couple of weeks here in the south of England, we've had a real mixed bag of weather. Half term was all over the place, really. It was rainy one moment, sunny the next minute. We never knew what to expect next. And the weather seems to have settled now a little bit and it's been dry the last couple of days. Yesterday was really overcast and today it's actually really lovely and sunny outside, but it's still not very warm. It doesn't feel like really summery weather yet. So I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and a handmade top and as you can see, it's a blouse. And I recently took part in Me Made May over on Instagram and I pledged um, for Me Made May to wear a different item of handmade clothing each day. And I also tried to mix it up to wear a different pattern company for each day of each week. And it really made me think hard about what garments in my wardrobe I'm reaching for and what I don't go for as often. And I found out in Me Made May that I don't often reach for my blouses. Um, I often wear a jersey type top or a woven top, like a t-shirt type woven top. But I don't often go for a blouse and I had to think about why and I think it's because I have kind of a life that requires mostly casual clothing. I don't work in an office or something like that. And so I often feel a blouse is a little bit dressy for every day. But actually, I think a blouse can look really nice and casual if you do pair it with a pair of jeans like I'm wearing today. So after me made May, I decided I'm definitely going to try and wear my blouses more often because I do really enjoy wearing them and I do like them a lot. And this is actually, I think, the oldest blouse I made. So it's quite an old one now, but I still really love it. And I made it using this pattern here, which is the blouse pattern by the Avid Seamstress. And it was a really great first blouse pattern to try, actually, when I first started sewing, because it's quite a simple um, blouse design. I'll show you the line drawing so you can see what it looks like. It's quite a loose fitting boxy blouse. So it doesn't have any darts in it. And it's got these quite simple sleeves rather than with a sort of full sort of shirt cuff. They're just elasticated at the sleeve. And I quite like that because it feels a bit more casual and relaxed to wear. Then it's got a band collar and a button down front. And as I said, it's designed to be fairly sort of loose fitting and relaxed to wear. And in terms of sizing, it goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 22 and the largest size is for a bust of 48 inches. And I made my first version here in this really lovely soft drapey viscose fabric. And I think this pattern works really well in a viscose because it is a bit more of a loose fit blouse, so it drapes really nicely in a viscose fabric. And this viscose fabric I got from Lamazi Fabrics. It was a really long time ago, so I don't think they have it in stock anymore, but I think it's a really cute print on it. And I'll stand up so you can see a bit more detail of what it is. So it's got a cream base and all these little cute little foxes all over it, which I thought were really sweet. Um, I think it works really well for a blouse and I had fun choosing some buttons that sort of tied in with a fox colour. I'll show you. Sort of toffee coloured buttons. And it's really nice and comfy to wear because it's in a viscose. It's lovely and soft. And when I used to work in an office um, a few years ago, I had a few blouses and they're all made of cough, cotton and they're quite stiff and less comfortable to wear. But I find... And I didn't really enjoy blouses, so it sort of put me off wearing them and um, having worn those cotton blouses. But I feel like a viscose blouse is a totally different thing to wear and so much more comfy. In terms of sizing, when I made this blouse, I think I went for the UK size 6, which is designed for a bust of 32 and a half inches, a waist of 25 inches and hips of 34 and a half inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36. So that fit me on the bust, but was slightly smaller on the waist and hips than I am. But 
because it's quite a boxy straight shape to this blouse I didn't grade out at the waist and the hips and it still fits absolutely fine I think there's plenty of room around the waist and hips I'll stand up just so you can see a bit better that so yeah it's still nice and loose to wear with that size and it was quite a nice simple sew the um avid seamstress instructions are really detailed and there are lots of sort of color photos throughout the um instruction booklet so it's quite a nice one to follow along so although I was quite new to sewing when I made this I did find it came together fairly well and wasn't too scary for a pattern that involved sort of like a button placket and a little bang collar and that sort of thing but I put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on one thing I would mention about this pattern actually that I think I've got a little um little um stick it here um telling me on the front is the pattern says for my size you need two meters of fabric if the fabric's 145 centimeters wide but I found I only needed 1.5 meters so um I've mentioned that here if I ever do make it again in the future just because that's quite a lot less fabric to need to buy so it's worth bearing in mind I don't know how it is for the larger sizes because it does say you need two meters of fabric for every size from UK 6 to UK 22 so I don't know if the UK 22 might take the full two metres, but I definitely feel, feel like I'm able to get away with 1.5 metres for my size for this pattern. And one other thing I've noticed actually when I've been wearing this blouse today, which I think I might tweak if I made a future version of it, is I think if I made it again, I could do with a slight forward shoulder adjustment. I think it's something I didn't really notice or know about when I first started sewing, but now I'm becoming more aware of like my body type and the sort of standard adjustments I need to make. And I do find I often do need to make a forward shoulder adjustment. I can feel this blouse, the um, shoulder seam just sits a little bit far towards the back, as you can see. I think it could do with maybe being a centimetre or so forward just to make sure it doesn't feel like it's sort of slipping back on me a little bit, which I feel like this one maybe does slightly. So it's still absolutely fine to wear and really comfy, but I think I might make that um, slight adjustment if I did make another version of this blouse. I am really enjoying wearing this one today and I really love the fox print fabric. I think it's really cute. So that's what I'm wearing today, the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. So now I'll move on to what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks on the sewing front. And the first thing I've sewn over the last couple of weeks is a couple of items for my daughter, which I wanted to get sewn up over half term so they're ready for her to go back to school because they are a couple of garments to go in her school PE kit. So my son and daughter go to the same local primary school and the PE kit requires them to wear a royal blue colour, jogger or short. And it's quite hard to find um, joggers and shorts in the shops that are the right royal blue colour, but also fit them really well. So I'm really glad I'm able to sew so I can make them garments that are really nice and comfy for them to wear and also fit them around the waist and on the length too. So I've already made them some joggers for winter and which they got a lot of wear out of. And now I've just been making some shorts. Now it's getting to warmer weather. For my son, I've been able to just cut off his joggers because he invariably makes holes in the knees. So it's quite a nice um, thing to be able to continue to use the garment, just chop, crop them off to shorts level. So he's got some shorts already. But my daughter didn't have any. Her um, clothes don't get as worn as quickly as with my son. So I made two pairs of shorts for her over half term. And I made them using the same pattern I've used for joggers as well, which is the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Bias. And I'll put up the line drawing so you can see the pattern. This pattern comes as a children's version and also a men's version and a women's version. And my whole family really like the pattern. I've made the men's version for my husband and I've got a few pairs of the women's version for me. I find them a really comfy jogger to wear and a really nice simple sew too. They come together really nicely. They're just quite a relaxed um, fit jogger, kind of mid-rise with a sort of quite a straight leg to them. And they've got little pockets too. And my son um, really likes having a little cord around the waist, his waist. He often likes to sort of tie different types of knots in the cord. Um, so he enjoys that. Yeah, their children's pattern comes in age 2 to 10. And I find it's quite... Um, quite what you call it. it, the age corresponds quite well to my children's size. I think actually I might have traced out the size age five for my daughter and she's age six now. So I just added a little extra room around the edge of the pattern piece when I was cutting out the fabric rather than trace out the size six, just because I was being a little bit lazy there. But they've come out absolutely fine. And because it's elasticated at the waist, you can kind of gather them in to the right waist size anyway. So I made two pairs for my daughter and here they are. They're quite cute little pairs of PE shorts. They're both pretty much exactly the same. As you can see, they've got little pockets. My daughter doesn't like the cord around her waist, so she's just got, just got a simple elasticated waist there. And when I made these, the only change I made to the pattern other than to crop it off to shorts length was I just took the lines out slightly to make a slightly wider bottom bit because the Hudson pants does have quite a narrow slim fit. And I thought for a short it might be nice if it's not quite so close fitting, particularly if you if it's a bit of a warm day and you want a bit of sort of a breeze around your legs. Um, 
So yeah, those are the Hudson pants I made. And I made them in a really nice royal blue French cherry fabric, which is quite nice and lightweight. And I was looking online for a lightweight French cherry because I wanted them to be yeah, fairly nice and light for a summery hot day. And the fabric actually I got from a new to me um, online fabric shop. I was just browsing for sources for a royal blue coloured French terry and I came across a fabric shop that had quite reasonably priced French terry and it's called Moonbeam Fabrics and I will link them down below. So I actually got quite a big piece of French terry and I've got quite a lot of it left here. I thought if I got quite a decent amount, I think I might have got three metres, then I've got plenty left over because I definitely am going to be sewing more pairs of joggers and shorts for their PE kits going forward, particularly for my son who does go through them quite quickly because he is quite active and always dashing about and scuffing his knees and things so yeah, I've got plenty more of the fabric but they're a really nice fabric company to buy for actually um buy from when the fabric came it also came with um, a little tea bag and a pack of biscuits which I thought was a really nice touch I'll put a picture up so you can see what came in the package which was really nice and also, when I was browsing the website, I went ahead and bought this French cherry. And then I carried on looking afterwards because I realised I was sort of running low on elastic that I need for the Hudson pants. I think it's either a one and a quarter or one and a half inch wide elastic. I didn't have much left in my stash. And I saw they had quite a few different widths of elastic that was quite reasonably priced. So I rang them up and said, is there any chance I could actually... Um, add a few pieces of elastic to my order as well and then it would all be in the same postage rather than making another order and having more postage to pay and they very kindly sent me a code um they very kindly emailed me a code that I could add in so I could make a second order and I added that code in to give me free postage and then they made sure to bundle it all up in one package so it all came together so I thought that was really great service that they were happy to do that and happy for me to add on those extra haberdashery items so that's the th first thing I made, these two pairs of Hudson pants. They're ready to go for my daughter for the warm weather. Or I did say to my husband, now I've made these, we'll probably have rain and cold weather all term and they won't get anywhere. But <laughs> we shall see. Fingers crossed we'll get some nice weather and she'll get to wear these to school soon. So as well as the two pairs of mini Hudson pants shorts, I also completed one other sewing project over half term. And this is actually one that I made together with my son, which was really nice to do some sewing together, actually. A couple of years ago, he went through a phase where he was really enjoying um, working on the sewing machine with me and trying some different things. And we made a teddy bear and we got some fur fabric and made a quite a basic teddy bear, just um, two sides of a teddy shape. And we sewed them together and stuffed it. And he really loves that teddy and still has it in bed, which is really nice. Um, I didn't enjoy sewing with the fur at all. It went absolutely up my nose, all over the carpet. But um, it was really nice to see him enjoying sewing and enjoying making this teddy. So it was worth it for that. Um, and we also made a tote bag, a lined tote bag, and he really enjoyed with that tote bag um, decorating it with some of my decorative stitches on my machine. So I've got a Faf Ambition 1.0 machine that has quite a few pretty decorative stitches like little houses and little flowers and hearts and all sorts like that. And I never really use them at all in my dressmaking. But whenever I've got my machine out, he always admires those stitches. So it was really nice to see him having a go of those stitches and using them to make his bag pretty with different kind of stitches on it. So... It's nice to see him exploring a different aspect of the sewing machine that I really never use. But over the last year or so, he hasn't been as interested in sewing after that little sort of flurry of interest. But last weekend, it was a really rainy day and we were at home and my husband was playing with the children. And I was finishing off sewing these um, shorts for my daughter and my son came over and showed a bit of interest in the sewing machine. So I said, do you fancy doing some sewing together? And he was really up for it. So we had to think about what we could make and I had to look in my fabric stash and I found that we had some of the fabric left over from when we'd made his tote bag a couple of years ago and we had to look and measured it out and there was just enough to make a cushion cover and my son quite likes um, his cushions in his room so he was quite keen on the idea of making a new cushion and this fabric is quite cool. So this is the cushion we made together and as you can see you can probably see why he likes this fabric it is quite fun. It's like a Mario Kart's fabric with all the different Mario Kart's characters like Mario and Yoshi and the coins and things on it. And so he's got a tote bag in this fabric and I was really pleased there was just enough left to make this cushion. It's quite a nice substantial weight quilting type cotton so it works really well for a cushion. And I was quite pleased because I had a look in my sort of stash of haberdashery items and I found I had a zip that was just the right length so we could add a zip to the cushion too which I thought would be quite good because then we can easily get it off and wash it if needs be if it does get a bit mucky. So yeah, this is a cushion and you can see it's got the zip on the bottom. It is an invisible zip that I had, but as you can see, it's not turned out invisible. Um, I didn't want to be a perfectionist about this cushion. I just wanted to be, it to be something my son could enjoy getting involved with each stage. So he helped me 
cut it out and clip it all together and he helped me do the sewing of the zip and everything and he's really pleased with it and he's had it in his bed I just went and grabbed it from his bed to show you so I'm really pleased how it turned out and it's really nice to do some sewing with him it's just a basic um, 18 inch wide cushion and we cut the pattern pieces to be 18 inch because I find if you cut the pattern pieces the same size as the cushion pad that once you've sewn the seams and pop the cushion in it ends up being quite nice and tight fitting I find if you measure the size at 18 inches and then add seam allowance on extra sometimes it can look like a cushion's not quite filled properly so that's the way I like to do it so it was just really nice to make this together with him and I think he might be up for another sewing project um, sometime soon so I have to get thinking about what else he might like to make. So those are the two sewing projects that I've completed over the last week or so. The shorts for my daughter's PE kit and the cushion cover that I made together with my son. And I'm now working on a project for me, a dressmaking project, and I'm really enjoying this one. So my current project I'm now working on is using this fabric here. It's a really lovely and viscose fabric that I got from Self Made. And they are an online website and they used to be called Stoff and Still, but they've recently rebranded. And I really like their viscose fabrics. I find them really nice quality and this one's no exception. It's lovely and drapey, but it's also quite substantial and opaque. So perfect for a summery dress, which is what I'd like to make. As you can see, it's in this lovely leopard print. I think it's a really nice leopard print. When I saw it online, I just really fancied um, getting this and turning it into something. And you might have seen this fabric already if you watched my May fabric haul video, which I posted a couple of weeks ago. In that video, I'm sharing a few summary fabrics and my summary sewing plans for them. And I'll link that video up above in case you fancy checking it out. But this is one of the fabrics I was talking about. And I shared in this video that I would like to turn this into a sort of midi style dress for summer because I really like the idea of this as kind of a strappy midi dress I could wear on a summer holiday. But I also thought it'd be really nice as a kind of versatile dress I could wear maybe in the winter too, maybe layered over a sort of black long sleeve top or something like that. So I thought it might work all year round. And I know a lot of people say leopard print is a neutral, so I guess that's up for debate, but I do like a leopard print every now and then. And I thought this is quite a nice sort of scale quite a nice coloured one. So this is the fabric and I'm planning on hacking it or I've started hacking it, um, hacking a pattern to make a midi dress and the pattern I'm hacking is this pattern here which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. It's a really nice woven cami top pattern with these spaghetti straps and this deep V at the front and back and quite a sort of square shape to the main body and it's available in a really good size range and it's available in a 0 to 18 US sizing and also a 14 to 30. And the 14 to 30 has a couple of um, differences to it. It's got bust starts and also wider straps. But I really like this pattern. I love the plain cami top on its own. I think it's a really great top to wear for summer. But I think it's also one that's really great for hacking just because it's got such a square shape. It's really easy to crop it off and add sort of different options to the bottom. So I've hacked this one a few times before, which you might have seen if you've been watching my channel for a while. But I really like the idea of making a midi dress out of the Ogden cabbie, which is something new for me. Um, if you've seen my recent videos, I've been sort of gradually sort of dipping my toe into making midi length garments. It's not a length I previously wore much at all, but I'm really getting to enjoy midi length. So I thought it'd be fun to have a dress of that length. So I'll show you how I'm getting on with my dress. And here it is. And I've sort of finished the bodice and now I'm sort of getting towards the skirt. So as you can see, it's got this lovely sort of deep V-neck bodice. And one thing I did adjust slightly on this pattern is I actually brought the bodice up slightly at the back because it is really low at the back. And I thought if I'm cropping off a bit short, I didn't want it to come down too low at the back. So I just brought the back up slightly and I widened the strap slightly. They're still on the sort of slim side, but they're not quite as spaghetti as the pattern intended. Maybe like a, I don't know, half a centimetre wider or something like that. So there's my bodice at the moment. And it's coming on really nicely. And I've added a little piece of ribbon I've just secured the back there, just so I know which side's the back and which side's the front, which I find really handy because I find this is one of those patterns where it's really hard to know the front from the back. And I've added on waist ties and I've gathered on my first skirt here. I thought it'd be nice to have waist ties just to bring in a little bit of the waist to add a bit of shaping there. And now I pretty much need to figure out um, how long I want my tear to be and then I'm going to add a ruffle on the bottom to bring it down to a midi length. So if that's going to take a bit of time, I think, and a bit of pinning on and just having a look in the mirror and then figuring out what length I want these tiers to be because it is a new length for me. I have made a sort of summery style dress of the Ogden Cami with tiers as a maxi dress. I'll try and find a picture of that and put that one up here and I really enjoyed making that one last summer but I'm really looking forward to making something different this time and trying a midi length with this one. 
So it's a work in progress. I need to go off and attach the final tier and just see how I get on and make the final decision on the length of this one. But I'm really enjoying sewing it. I do find the Ogden Cami sews up really nicely and it's a nice comfy one to um, wear. I think for this version, I've gone for the size zero, um, which is designed for chest of 32 inches, waist of 26 inches and hips of 34 inches. But the hip measurement isn't relevant for this version because I've just cropped off the cami um, around my natural waist and then I've added on a gathered skirt. So there's plenty of room there for my hips. Um, but I have previously, when I've wanted to make a layering piece, sized up one size. Um, but I've tried this bodice on with a sort of black top underneath and it, there still is room. So I think it'll be fine to work as a kind of sort of strappy dress for summer but also a layering piece for winter so yeah I'm really enjoying working on this one actually just taking my time and I've French seamed um no I haven't French seamed I've um slip stitched around the um inside here where the lining is secured onto the skirt so I've taken my time to kind of finish it all off so there are no exposed seams and I think what I might do when I come to attaching my bottom tier is instead of overlocking the seam, the gathered seam, I might um, add bias binding around there just to give all the seams a really enclosed finish so it lasts really well, this dress. But yeah, really enjoying it. And hopefully I'll finish that this by next week so I'll be able to show the full thing off. I just need to make that decision on the length on this one. So that is my current project, a midi dress hack of the Ogden Cami, and I'm really enjoying working on that one. And then there's one more thing I wanted to share in this video, which is a sort of mini tutorial. And it's a tutorial for making an adjustment that I recently made on a pattern and I talked about in a recent video and someone asked me if I could share details of how I did it. And so the pattern I made the adjustment on is a pattern from this magazine here, which is Five Mood Issue 16. And I made an adjustment to this blouse pattern here, which is the Ermine blouse. It's a really pretty blouse pattern with a button down front and a round neck and a sort of pretty gathered triangular yoke detail at the front. And I really enjoyed sewing the Amine blouse. And I'll put a picture up of my version just so you can see how it turned out. I made it in a really pretty viscose fabric from Minerva and I had a lot of fun sewing it. It came together really nicely. But one adjustment I made to the pattern pieces before I cut out the fabric, which is kind of coming to be a bit of a standard adjustment I make on a lot of woven patterns that have fairly fitted sleeves, which just add a little bit more room under the arm here. Um, to the sort of armhole to dip it slightly down just to give it a bit more room and make it a bit more comfortable because I do find sometimes on garments if the armhole comes up a bit tight I don't enjoy wearing it so much. So I thought I'd do a little mini tutorial on how I make that adjustment because it's quite straightforward and easy to do if you do have a pattern where you are worried it might come up a little bit tight there. It doesn't really alter the um, look of the garment too much but it does just make it a little bit more comfortable by dipping the arm side a little bit. So I've made a little video and I'm going to put it in now just to show you how I do that and hopefully you'll find it useful. So I'll pop that in now and I'll see you again after that video. This is quite a quick and easy adjustment just to add a little bit more ease into the arm side of a top and I find it works really well where a top feels a little bit tight under the armhole just to make it a bit more comfortable and add a little bit more room there. And you only need to adjust three pattern pieces the back bodice piece and the front bodice piece and the sleeve piece. And I've traced the sleeve piece out here, as you can see, but I haven't cut it out yet because I'll need to add a little bit more um, onto this one and I'll show you what I do. So the first adjustment I've made is to the back bodice piece and I'll zoom in so you can see what I've done. So here's the armhole of the back bodice and what I've done is added on this new pink line that dips down further to add a bit more room into this armhole. And I've made an adjustment to bring it down by one centimetre, but you could make it a little bit sort of larger if you wanted to, or a little bit smaller, depending how much ease you want. So I've yeah, reduced down by one centimetre and I've made sure that the one centimetre measurement carries on in to the point where the seam allowance is, because that's the point you'll be sewing at. So that's the point you want the full one centimetre measurement to be at. And then I've curved it back round to give a nice curved armhole that just adds a little bit more room at the bottom. So I'm going to be cutting off this bit just so I've got the extra room here. And I've done the same adjustment on the front um, bodice, which I'll show you here. So here's the front bodice. And again, as you can see, I've got a pink line, this nice curve round on the armhole and a one centimetre um, depth here along to the point of the seam allowance. Um, just so that gives a nice extra little room and you'll get the full one centimetre when you sew it at this point. And I'm going to cut that one off too. So those are the two adjustments I've made to the front and back bodice. And as I mentioned, I've gone for one centimetres, which I find often gives a nice little extra bit of room, but you could adjust that measurement if you wanted. 
So now I've made an adjustment to the front and back bodice to add a little bit more room to the armhole. I now need to make an adjustment to the sleeve piece to make it slightly larger so it fits with a slightly widened armhole. So as you can see, I've adjusted each side of the sleeve piece to make that corresponding adjustment. And I mentioned that I traced the sleeve piece but not cut it out. And that is because I did need to make the sleeve piece slightly larger at each side. So it's easier to make that adjustment before I cut it out and then have to add a little bit more tracing paper on just to make it a bit easier. But you can add on afterwards if you have already cut your sleeve piece out. But I'll zoom in to show you the adjustment I've made. So I've made the corresponding adjustment and um, instead of decreasing the size of the sleeve piece, I've added on this extra little sliver here just so it will match up with the wider armhole. And I've made it one centimetre wide to correspond to the adjustment I made on the front and back bodice. And as with the front and back bodice, I've brought the adjustment down. So the one centimetre tallies across to where the seam will be sewn. And I've taped it down just to sort of be back in line with the um, sleeve side seam here. And I've made the same adjustment on the other side, a one centimetre increase that comes down to the point where the seam will be sewn and then tapering in. So I'm going to cut this sleeve piece out just with a slightly wider pattern piece at the front top. So it does fit in with the back bodice and front bodice increases I've made to make the armhole slightly wider. So now I've adjusted the back and front bodices to cut off the little adjustment I made to um, deepen the armhole and add a bit more ease to stop it feeling tight under the armpit to give a slightly wider arm side. So that was nice and simple just to cut those two pieces off and I'll move across so you can see what the sleeve piece looks like too. I've cut the sleeve piece out now and it's got the extra room added here to correspond with the extra room created in the back and front bodice pieces. So here are the three final adjusted pattern pieces and these are now all ready to go and use to cut out your fabric and sew up your garment. So as you can see, it's quite a quick and easy adjustment to make, just three pattern pieces to adjust. And it's really effective in adding a bit more room under the arm and just making your garment a little bit more comfortable where it can sometimes come up a little bit tight. So I hope you enjoyed that mini tutorial video and found it useful too. I find it's just quite a quick and easy way of making an adjustment to make a garment a bit more comfortable where it might otherwise be a little bit tight under the arm. And it's an adjustment I often do make. And I think I might upload that video as a sort of standalone YouTube video, just in case it might be helpful to anyone else out there. I find that sort of YouTube fitting and adjusting video quite useful personally. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, somebody has also asked me for another mini tutorial type video of how I adjust the cuff top by the assembly line. It has quite a wide boat neck and I adjust my versions to bring in the boat neck slightly to make it a bit more bra strap friendly. So I'm planning to do a mini tutorial of how I make that adjustment too. So that'll be coming soon as well. So I think that's everything I've got to share in this video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about what I've been up to on the sewing front. And if you have enjoyed it, I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up. And I'm planning to be back again on Saturday with another video. So I'd love it if you join me for that video. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely week and yeah, hopefully see you again soon. Bye.